So we are about halfway through the Oscar categories, this very belated Oscar series, but we can finally start talking about the bigger awards at the Oscars, starting off with Best Animated Feature. And the nominees for that are Big Hero 6, Don Hall, Chris Williams, and Roy Conley. The Box Trolls, Anthony Stacci, Graham Annabel, and Travis Knight. How to Train Your Dragon 2, Dean DeBlois and Bonnie Arnold. Song of the Sea, Tom Moore and Paul Young. And The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, Isao Takahata and Yoshiaki Nishimura. And if you know me, you know how I feel about this category. I think it's an absolute travesty that the Lego movie was not nominated, but what can I do? This is the list we have now. So in terms of who I think should have should have won the Oscar at fifth place, I'm going to put the Box Trolls. Now, Leica, which is a company that makes that made the Box Trolls and Coraline and Paranorman, they've reached a point with their stop motion animation where it's become almost seamless. Like this this movie looks like it's CGI and that's incredible. Um, and Paranorman and Coraline are already pretty dark, but I think with the box trolls, uh, their gothic style really just kind of becomes fully realized. And you can see it in the animation, which is actually unsettling at certain points. Um, because the, the box trolls is a really ballsy movie in that it's so dark. Um, the humor is very dark. Um, sometimes it's just downright violent. Um, and it's it is also ballsy for Laika to make its titular characters, the box trolls, um, really practically silent, you know, to, to make these characters that we're supposed to be really invested in, like, pretty much, um, you know, unable for us to understand them. Um, and these set pieces in the movie are very well directed, they're large scale, especially when you start thinking about how they're all stop motion, it's mind-blowing. Um, but honestly, I don't think the Box Rose deserves a nomination here, uh, especially over the Lego movie, because I think it's just all way too all over the place. Um, the tone, I think, shifts way too unnaturally too often. Um, from being really silly to suddenly becoming really dark. And, you know, whatever messages this movie is trying to show um, are pretty half-hearted by the ending because it just doesn't have focus, in my opinion. And I have, like, a, a qualm with the voice acting and how it feels like no one has chemistry. It feels like people were, were in separate rooms as, as they recorded their lines. Now, at fourth place, I'm going to put Big Hero 6. And in terms of animation, Big Hero 6 is just incredible. Um, the environments are pretty much photorealistic at this point. Um, and the, the city of San Francisco, which I love, has a real personality about it, um, just through its visuals, and that's great. Um, and overall, the animation really is incredible, uh, from the character models to just the, the way they move, like, especially you can see it in the action scenes, like, they just move so well, there's just such dynamic movement, the camera has such freedom when it swoops around following these characters, and the voice acting is great from its very racially diverse cast, which is great also, because, you know, it's a great way to show kids that, you know, everyone's equal without really shoving it down their throats. Um, the soundtrack from Henry Jackman is awesome. Um, there is also real emotion beyond all the excitement. You know, this movie does have very, very emotional moments, and I really like seeing that. However, I do think that the focus of Big Hero 6 on being primarily a kid's movie above anything else kind of robs the, the movie from certain things. Like, the pace ends up moving way too quickly without really being able to flesh out a lot of things like uh, character moments and other elements like the villain um, and it also robs the emotional moments from a lot of gravity because the movie is trying to move too quickly. Now third place I'm gonna put How to Train Your Dragon 2 and again just photorealistic visuals especially with the particle effects here. This has some of the most realistic CGI smoke and water effects you'll ever see in an animated movie as well as the lighting which is absolutely perfect like this movie looks so real so many times um, and it is absolute eye candy, also in terms of like just variety with the different designs they have for all the dragon types, um, as well as just the way this movie is directed. Um, it just, you know, the camera just swoops and follows um, these dragons as they fly across the landscapes. It's really, really amazing stuff. Um, and the musical score from John Powell is phenomenal as always. Um, the voice cast is great, especially Kate Blanchett, who really just inhabits her character so well, you don't even know it's her anymore. Uh, the action scenes are just set on this breathtaking scale, like they're really, really epic, and I never use that word. Um, but what really sets How to Train Your Dragon to apart and really kind of elevates it above other DreamWorks movies is its really, really mature tone. You know, this movie tackles um, themes of death and uh, loss, and it, it really looks at them in a very sober and realistic way um, without really making things too dark for kids not to be able to access. Um, and, you know, they also tackle the theme of responsibility, which is a very universal thing, so this, this movie really can be watched by any, you know, member of the family. At number two, I'm gonna put Song of the Sea. And unlike the other three movies I just talked about, uh, Song of the Sea has very simple, traditional 
um, animation that really kind of works, I think, because it gives um, everything this storybook feel in this movie. Um, the music is just wonderful as well. Uh, there's an innocence to everything, from the visuals to the sound, um, and the music especially, which is like super Irish, like the main theme of the movie will get stuck in your head for days on end. It's, ve it's all very simple, but it works because it's simple. Um, and what's great about the story is that it does just keep on piling, uh, piling on like just all these Irish myths and legends, but it doesn't, you know, try to suffocate you with all this lore. Like it is laid out in a, in a way that both kids and adults will understand logically. Um, but, you know, adults will also be able to get a lot of these themes that are running through this movie because this movie is just rich with so many themes, but they're not hidden subliminally from kids or anything. They're, they are just laid out. They're very, very universal themes. And again, this is a movie anyone can really enjoy. And, you know, what, what, what really kind of brings that home is that every single character in this movie, I think, is extremely endearing. Like, especially Saoirse, who is the little girl who doesn't talk throughout the movie. She's amazing. But finally, at number one, the movie, I think, deserved the Oscar on Oscar night was The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. Um, first of all, the animation in this movie is jaw-dropping. It's absolutely incredible. It all looks hand-painted. Um, and seriously, every single frame of this movie could be hung up on a wall and, you know, it would look like a traditional Japanese painting. It's that good looking, especially one scene where Kaguya just runs out of her house and, you know, it, it's just all erratic and scary. It was absolutely mind-blowing to see. Um, and if How to Train Your Dragon 2 was mature in tone, the tone in The Tale of the Princess Kaguya is just so extremely mature that I don't consider it a kid's film at all. Um, it really felt like I was watching a movie and listening to a folk tale and looking through an art gallery all at the same time. Like This movie works on so many different levels so well. Uh, the voice cast is amazing. The direction also, the way it's directed, makes you forget you're watching an animated film. And, you know, pair that up with the music and the sound, which are both fantastic. Like, this movie is just a whole package. Um, and I understand that if you think it's too slow or if it's too long, but I think for what this movie is trying to be, it really, really succeeded. And as for my official prediction, who I thought would have taken the Oscar, I thought it was going to have the Trainer Dragon 2 because the first one was nominated before and the Lego movie was not there to stop it. But So imagine my surprise when Big Hero 6 won, which was kind of disappointing because they always go with the Disney thing, but whatever. Anyway, those were my thoughts on the Best Animated Feature category for this year. Uh, who did you guys think should have won, and what did you think about Big Hero 6 winning? Whatever you thought, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.